Okay, hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. Today we're cupping. And remember the last time we cupped? We <laughs> were doing it on that, the hand grinder, the Normcore. So I'm very happy to be doing a cupping. We're making a buying decision, potentially. Uh, Mr. Pablo is running out. Um, that's great, that's awesome. Um, I may continue with that because it was so good and popular and all that good stuff. Um, we'll still have to cup it. That's something I need to remember too, is like sometimes, you know, not every harpist is gonna be the same, right? Even though it's coming from the same producer, kind of like wine, right? So I'll still need to remember to cup it and not just buy straight away, um, unless I know that it's all coming from the same crop. And um, all right, so in this cupping, we may be re re uh, replacing Mr. Pablo. So what we have, when I was looking through Hasea's website and just kind of browsing the green that they have in stock, uh, I came across these two, which I thought, you know, could still add the sort of uh, taste notes that I like to chase for, for my menu. Um, it's not gonna be anything like, I think, Mr. Pablo, so they really have to be great on their own. Not beat it, but just be great on their own. Um, they've got a good price. So we've got a, um, a Costa Rica from the Hacienda Sonora uh, Villa Sarchi. That's a natural. Um, so I've never tried a natural Costa Rican yet. So that would just be cool just for trying new stuff, right? And then I also never had a Kenya on the menu. So I had a Kenya um, Miriwa Embu AA. Uh, harvested last year. The variety is SL28, SL34, and the process is washed. So I never had a, I never tried Kenyans before um, until I had this one from Clatch, Gatomboya AA. So lemon, green tomato, apricot. I really like clean, bright, juicy cups. I like that a lot, but I don't want it to be tea-like. So I still always want to have some body in my coffee um, to feel like I'm drinking coffee and not like I'm drinking tea. So that's something I will be, you know, addressing in these sample roasts here and, and discerning if I can roast it in a way that I like and that I want to present it to you guys. At the same time, balancing, not taking out what I'm paying for, not taking out or roasting out any nuance as I roast this, co this coffee. Does it shine as a super light roast without going, without having any body? Like that's the way it's gonna be. That's the way it should be, not should be, but just like best presented or best roasted at. I don't know, we'll find out, right? So that's that Kenyan, we have Costa Rican. And then just for, you know, I guess kind of like to counter or give like a, another thing on the, on the table. I have this, hold on, this one, this Ethiopia, from the Bui Bora, it's a Yerga chef too. Um, lemon black tea honey, okay, so also washed. So this is a very typical African coffee, maybe just to give us a little bit of um, standard, I guess. So a sort of standard sort of tasting coffee, hopefully we roasted it on the Ikawa um, and see how that sort of fares against these. And uh, if anything, if I need to, I might be able to cup some of the uh, fresh stock that we have here, whatever we have in stock. Be taking notes. I'm gonna go through this cupping. I've roasted these yesterday on the little sample roaster. They've had 24 hours to rest, and now I'm going to just cup them and see what's up, okay? And we'll come back to you in a second. Okay, so I was able to go through these and get a nose on them. And you wanna to try to get, you know, smell them, really get in there right when you grind it. Cause if you wait really long, like I used to, I used to do this where I was like, I'd forget, I'd be so concerned about the process of cupping. I would kind of forget to actually do the cupping, <laughs> but that all just comes with time, right? So right when I ground it, um, I labeled all of them. I'm not doing this as a blind tasting cause I wanna see what's the best level that I'm gonna be able to roast it at. I've already chosen these where I think um, this is what I wanna do. So it's not this huge blind tasting where I'm trying to get the, trying to figure out what the best coffee is. I already know what the price is. If I didn't know what the price was, I would probably wanna do this blind. I know what the price is. I already know what I'm getting. And right after I ground them, 
I went through, labeled everything, and then I just went through and I said, one, two, three, four, five, let's smell them and get a nose on them. Cause I don't have a very good nose anyway. I have a very like stuffy nose all the time. I, I have mad allergies. So <laughs> I have to really try and smell and really, you know, get in there uh, so that I can discern. And now, now it's like, it's kind of gone. I can't really pick up that, that nose where they all kind of like, really smell the same unless there's something like a geisha on the table or something crazy like anaerobic i'll smell that but for the most part you want to do that right away uh, otherwise the nose or the bouquet of the coffee um, after you grind is going to dissipate pretty quickly okay so here's what i got number one this is our um, from the yukawa sample it's kind of old i'd say it's not so it's not the freshest coffee uh, but maybe it's akin to the rest of these. This It doesn't tell me when it was harvested. what I get here? Tomato, vine, vegetal, kind of green. Roasted this at, say, um, their light profile. Okay, number two, Costa Rica. This is a medium roast, a medium light roast, and then a medium development. So that's how they label their stuff. And I got tobacco berry chocolate. Here's our second Costa Rica. This is done at a light roast and a light development. So same as this one, but then a little bit more vegetal, a little bit more green, just because it's lighter. And you can even tell that from the color. Number four, we have our Kenyan. This is our light and low roast. I got graham cracker, honey, waffle. So that is interesting. And then here's our Kenyan light, light roast at about a medium development, so a little bit darker. So I got almond liqueur and amaretto. Really, really strong amaretto nose note here. Oh, that was really interesting. I've never smelled that before in a, in a nose. So I got excited because I actually smelled something different or I was able to discern and pick it up. That was the nose. I think that was quite successful for not having a uh, cupped in a long time. And maybe that was a good thing too, to just take a break. All right, so we're gonna get some water on these guys. Get these guys to brew for four minutes and we'll get going here. Cool, I haven't cupped in a while. I'm excited. <laughs> We've been so busy with like work and then also trying to go on vacations and do trips and whatnot. So um, I feel like right when we, we let go of the pressure of running a business, I, you know, I could make more time for joy in my life. And even though coffee is joyful, uh, the fact that it was like, le like uh, the pressure of like turning it into a business or making that next step was just this incredible anxiety that hung over us and uh, you know, some, some lessons just come with age, <laughs> for us, anyway. Okay. All right. A lot of graham crackery, honey, breakfast, waffles, um, that kind of vibe. Grape nuts, always, <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> That's what I smell though, man. All right, let's clear these off. Ooh, that looks light. You know, the light roast, uh, I'm gonna wait. I'm still kind of messing around with that Ikawa. Um, and now that I'm not doing a business, I don't feel so pressured anymore to like, you know, limit what I gotta say. <laughs> That's also the beauty too. I'm finding that, you know, since letting go of this trying to do a business thing for me has been really liberating in that I feel like slowly I can I can slowly like go back into being myself and presenting who I really am on camera <laughs> not that I wasn't you know myself it's always just like you know you um you want to be professional at, or at some capacity <laughs> but at the same time I don't want to just be a boring talking head. I want to. I want to be me. I want to feel creative and liberated on this channel. Uh, okay, so this looks incredibly light. Um, all the others look pretty good, um, and based on color, I can tell. I think. Yeah. I can tell which one is the little bit darker one or a little bit lighter one, which is good because that was the intention. I was like. With the Sikawa, I wanna just see really quickly what it's gonna taste like at a lighter or a little bit darker kind of roast level. 
and uh the fact that ikawa like i'll get into it we'll, we'll break it down like what i what i feel like i'm how i'm using it and stuff because i i don't i don't feel really, really adept at it yet so that's why i haven't been making any videos on it so I take notes and this one is for the sample roaster so i was like how do i even take notes when it's not like the way it roasts is very like it's like a point and shoot camera it's like push this push that you don't control much of anything so I was like, well, I'm just gonna roast it at whatever those little templates are, try to find what the levels are and what, what those levels taste like. So that when I take it into production, if I decide to go with this, this coffee, um, I can establish a bridge of communication that makes sense between my sample roaster and my production roaster. Cause really it doesn't matter like whatever, like I've always said before, it doesn't really matter what kind of roaster you have is it's what matters is like can you use it <laughs> can you interpret the data that it's giving you because the data points that the ikawa gives me is totally different from what i'm i'm used to doing with my mill city roaster roaster right so it's like you just have to find that bridge and and interpret it right you're like okay you're speaking this language that guy's speaking this language, I gotta be the interpreter. And that's all I was like trying to do, but unsuccessfully, because I haven't really focused on it. But I'm, I'll, I'll be doing that now, and then I'll report back in a little video. So maybe, I don't know, I may find it interesting. Um, okay, so yeah, this guy, our Kenya, our light roast right here, uh, we had a weight loss of 12.8%. I was like, cool, that's good. All right, we did, I did 50 gram samples. I didn't roast this at full capacity because I just kind of knew that from past experience, like if, if a certain roaster is not powerful enough, it's not gonna be running at full capacity, full drum capacity or whatever it is. So you're gonna have to make some sort of adjustment. So I thought running 50 gram samples on this little roaster, it's electric, you know, air roaster, um, would allow it to be, it's, it, it would allow it to roast successfully um, without losing any power or being inconsistent because you're running full batches. This one on the other hand, which was like this, you know, just our regular Ethiopia one that I was just trying to do for, what, what do you call that, like a, like a chaser? <laughs> uh, a standard, you know? And then these deviate from this standard in terms of like, um, yeah, I run that at uh, 100 grams. That's what I was gonna say. So this was a full batch one. Cool, we're gonna see what, that's, what that tastes like. And then this medium one here, or this darker roast, because I still had it as a light roast, but I, I put it as a medium development, was at 16% weight loss. And the difference between these two in total roast time, six minutes 10, six minutes 30. So you see how much like 10 seconds difference can make. So you have a difference between 12.8% weight loss and 16% weight loss. Interesting, right? And that correlates to the to your production roaster too. It could be a matter of 10 seconds before you roast out all of the nuance and the exciting flavors of a special specific coffee. That's really, that's fun. That's interesting and also kind of like yee <laughs> when you go to roast it, right? All right, here's a Costa Rica natural. Washed natural. I actually forgot to do the numbers on this, so I'll do that really quickly after, but I think we should give these guys a whirl first. So let's rinse. Damn, that was good. <laughs> that was good. You know how things will taste freaking bomb diggity in the cup? And then when you go to brew it, same coffee, same roast profile, it'll taste different. I don't know what that's called, but it's definitely kind of frustrating and maddening. Um, this one, sharp, kind of kind of raw. I didn't like that. Mm. Better. Hmm. Okay. This tastes really good from these. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. Maybe I roasted it wrong. This is weird. So there's a sharp, harsh thing and it's lingering here on the sides. Not not how acidity is. It's it's different. Um, there are good flavors in there, but it's being masked by this sharp thing in there. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not I'm I don't like it so far. This tastes better. There's no sharpness. 
kind of boring boring in, in that I've tasted this before and, and I'm I'm trying to look for something to replace Mr. Pablo that's the point right this is great this is the blueberries lemon graham cracker really true to form right here uh, Bui Bora Yerga Chef. I've tried other Yerga Chefs. Obviously, we have one here. We have an Ethiopia Yerga Chef. Um, really similar to that. They say lemon, black tea, and honey. I've got blueberries in mine. And good body. A nice, warm, honey, lingering, graham cracker, waffle, honey thing. Wow, I'm <laughs> out of all the Akawa coffees that they give you in their little, like, they just give you five. This one is really good. Um, well, that's good because I, I roasted that for myself. Okay, back again. I just remembered it's tasting really, it's tasting better now. The harshness is gone. So I just remember this. Naturals, I, f I kind of forget this sometimes, but that means I'll have to cup it again. Naturals, they need to, to degas more. You know, people say they should, they should rest for 48 hours instead of 24. Washed, 24, you're good to go. So I guess, you know, with this natural process, processing, I can taste that. I can taste that harshness. So we're just call, we'll call this mulligan. We're going to cup this tomorrow, this Costa Rica. We give it a fair shot. Um, it's tasting better now. That harshness is gone at 11 minutes. Grapefruit, lemon, chocolate, dark chocolate. There's a bitterness on the end, on the finish. Good body. Okay, that was our medium one, right? So maybe not, you know, maybe we don't roast that at medium. So here's the light. Tea-like, tomatoes on the vine, green vegetable. There's a roast in between these two that I think maybe that's where it's gonna be the best. Just roasting on this little Likawa. Maybe needs to tighten up a bit on that, on that roast. Can't roast it too, can't roast it too light, not too dark. There's a roast in between here. There's a level in between here that I think is probably gonna taste better. Again, let's get, let's cup this tomorrow because it's a natural and let a lot of this harshness kind of go away because it I really feel like it's this big masking tape over everything that it wants to be so okay let's let's just leave that all right the Kenya <sighs> tea like dry on the finish juicy on the mid palate it's red berries it's purple berries purple color definitely don't want to go any darker I'm already tasting this sort of like sooty Heavy, flat, bleh, don't like that one. Kenya, possibly, it's it's good, it's juicy, it's lively, it's red berries. It is, but the, sh the finish is short. It's a short finish in that it, you know, it leaves you quite quickly. Okay, let's compare this Kenya to this Ethiopia. Mm. This one is really good. I think because it's sweeter at the end, it ends on a sweet note, whereas this ends on a like a sharp note and it's gone. <sighs> it's like a very sweet lemon, short finish. Uh, sweetness is low. It's like a Pinot Grigio. Short, crisp, light, right? But, um, Maybe, maybe a Pinot Grigio that's kind of like on the cheaper end in that it doesn't, it doesn't linger, it doesn't finish. It's not a long finish, it's a very short finish. So it's like beep, like that. Versus what I think what I want in my mouth, like in terms of taste is like, yeah, <laughs> like music, like a nice boom crescendo, like something that stays with you, something that's, that says something to you. like this one mm, it's just really pleasant so the finish is sweet it's long it's a like caramelly waffle breakfast kind of flavors but then also that they throw some fruit on it or something it's like fruits and waffles <laughs> which is really good uh, but I'm not buying this one this is just gonna be for me um, so unfortunately I think Again, we're gonna wait to, to cup this again. Does Costa Rica even have a chance? I think so. Why? Because there's there's a sweetness in there that I really like, that I think should be on the menu. And if I'm trying to replace Mr. Pablo and have it kind of still be great on its own, but maybe still 
add some really nice zing to the blends like that's what I like to do I want to get something that's great on his own but also just adds that little bit of zing or innovation or uh, something something tasty or something different in the blends that's what I want to get I'm gonna say no to this Kenya from the Miriwa Embu AA Kenya harvested I guess 2021 SL28 SL34 wash processed coffee you know when I first got into coffee, I thought I would like naturals more because because they said naturals are sweeter. And I was like, well, that sounds good. <laughs> but now as I'm actually tasting that and understanding what that what that means in the mouth, like on the palate. Yeah, I'm kind of vibing that way, but I do need some crazy like nuance of flavor um, for it to be. For, for me to want to buy it, for me to want to put up money for it, you know? Because otherwise, like, really what I, could, what I could do is sell solid, chocolatey, caramelly coffees, and there's nothing wrong with that, too. Um, but for my own, I guess for my ego, <laughs> you know? I need to get something exciting. Um, otherwise, there won't be as much joy as I want there to be in coffee. But yeah, good to know. This Kenya is not for me. Um, really have an Ethiopia here that I, I think fulfills that role in being, you know, I, if I want to go tea like I can do that. If I want blueberries in the cup, I can do that. And I think I think the body of the, the coffee is still good and the sweetness in the, on the mid palate is still very good. Um, and it beats this Kenya for me. Uh, maybe this roast is not good, you know, but uh, wasn't my favorite. Okay, this Costa Rica, because it has that sweetness, we're gonna give it another shot tomorrow and see what's up. But this, Bui Bora, I think that's how you say it. <laughs> wow, it's good. I'm so glad I roasted this for myself. <laughs> Put it in this cool Sabbath bag. What did they give me? Columbia. Oh yeah, this was excellent. You should try their coffee too. Very, 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 very good. I think what it's gonna happen is I'm gonna cup this tomorrow, leave it out again here, open like this. If they don't taste good, I'm gonna buy Mr. Pablo again. And if it does, then I'm probably go with this Costa Rica, okay? And this Costa Rica, which was, you know, you should have let it um, off gas them one more day. Had a little bit of harshness, which I could actually taste and, um, it was cool to actually taste what I, I heard people were saying. So I could validate what I've heard on the internet or talk to people. I actually know what that tastes like now. Um, I think I've done that before, but I think the palate is, is refining, right? Uh, the variety is called Via, Via Sarchi. Cool, never heard of that before. Cool. I'm always excited to bring like, if I can like bring something new, you know, cause it's just, ooh, new, right? Um, but nothing wrong with a tried and true Mr. Pablo. Very, very good. But these naturals, man, um, while they're a little finicky to roast, um, they could they could just easily go to the dark side so fast. I think they provide the best flavors, you know, um, so far, so far in my little journey here. So anyway, thanks so much for joining me. That was really fun. Great to get back here on the cupping table. I should be cupping more often, but you know, life. So anyway, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.